these people will receive Mr. Cochran very points few to votes. the ballot paper for the Labourers and the Proportional Representative uh, Union Executive, where six of the ten candidates are BLF affiliates. Yes, he says this is the most um, important union election uh, ever held, and the ballot has been handed over to the Commonwealth Electoral Office, which is exercising tight control. Our members, uh, but Mr. Cochran says mainly BLF sympathisers no have returned their ballot. They have held uh, a number of job meetings around the big jobs. And uh, when I've explained uh, to our members the problem about the low return of ballot papers, there's been an immediate response and quite a frightened response in uh, many cases. And as a result, uh, a whole number of workers have brought their ballot papers uh, into work the next day. Well, has the BLF been actively campaigning here? They haven't been as active in Newcastle as they have uh, in Sydney and other, other areas, which uh, surprises me a little. Um, maybe uh, one reason for that is that the vast concentration of building activity is in Sydney and uh, there's not a lot of activity here in Newcastle. But uh, yes, they have been seen around some of the jobs, but uh, there hasn't been uh, the type of uh, violence uh, that we've witnessed recently in Sydney. Isn't this just democracy in action? You have a, an election and you find out who wins. I mean, if someone votes for the BLF people, isn't, isn't that, that what, what an election is all about? about? Of course it is. Uh, but what worries us, uh, as I said earlier, that the vast majority of building workers uh, would not want to see a return uh, of the Gallagher forces through our organisation and a return to the sort of anarchy and violence of the past. Uh, and uh, we believe that uh, there would only be a very, very small percentage of uh, building workers that would actually vote uh, for their particular candidates. Uh, so if the apathy of the vast majority of... The CSIRO has received over $200,000 to come up with new ideas to reduce the possibility of damage to the environment by coal burning power stations. Although much of the research will be carried out at Tarong Power Station in Queensland, the findings will be of major interest to the Hunter region with power stations like Liddell and Bayswater and to the central coast with power stations at Araring, Vales Point and Munmora. Resources Minister Peter Morris announced the funding saying the choice of a Queensland power station is due to its isolation from other industrial pollution. He said information from that study would be used to create dispersion models at Monash University Wind Tunnel in Melbourne. The grant is part of a total $15 million to be allocated this year through the National Energy Research Program to make energy production more efficient, reliable and environmentally safe. Newcastle City Aldermen have made regular inspections of the $13 million Queen's Wharf project and today they were expected to turn up for a full tour of the foreshore at about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Foreshore Committee Chairman Dennis Nichols was there waiting and waiting and waiting. Finally he had to call off the tour and administer a bungle. He said the tour was allegedly left off the Alderman's itinerary. They were given a month's advance notice but Alderman Nichols explained that could easily have been overlooked due to the sheer weight of pressing commitments. Nevertheless, he says inspections like today's are important. Well, because it's important for the local alderman to be kept informed as to where the construction and the development of the park are up to, and uh, for people to see in general that the council has got a, a very deep interest in the project and uh, to keep that positive attitude for the major development of our major bicentennial project. Alderman Nichols says another date will be arranged for the inspection with hopefully a slightly better turnout. Hilton and Ellalong collieries have been idle for about four weeks. Miners walked off the job over a manning dispute. Today, about 250 miners met at the Cessnock showground to decide what their future strategy should be. Off, According to uh, Hilton Ellalong well, Lodge President one David Jeffries, the situation has changed and they are now fighting for jobs, not only conditions. The situation has changed. The, it's took a new turn in it when the Pigo Walls End is uh, applied to the coal board to shut Old Pelton Colliery and issue 15 notices. So we're in a position of trying to salvage the 15 jobs and that's the reason the men had returned to work today. 
Many of the miners felt if they went back to work they'd be no further ahead than they were four weeks ago, and discussion became extremely heated. What is you do? You get a situation that we wouldn't go back until they spoke to us. You knew what it was, everyone had voted on it. However, in the end, miners agreed to return to work so that talks can continue with Newcastle Wars End. But it's unlikely that this is the end of problems at Pelton and Ellalong collieries. With 15 redundancies looming on the horizon, it's more than likely that there'll be more industrial action. Ron Monkton was officially given his ATCC Unitrike today by its developer Jeff Owens. Jeff and two other men acquired a CEC grant to make the vehicle and have formed their own company, FinCohen. The Unitrike prototype is worth $2,600 and has a maximum speed of 74 kilometres an hour. It's registered as a car with an annual registration fee of $202. Mr Monkton has a driver's licence to use the Unitrike, which he says means a great deal to him. Freedom. Freedom and liberty to get around, uh, enjoy a bit of life, and try and find out what's going on in the world sort of thing around Australia and, and just getting to meet new people and introducing people to what's called freedom and mobility. That's the idea of the whole concept and the, the whole idea. The, the idea. Unitrike was developed with assistance from the Hunter Region Enterprise Agency. Agency General Manager Dennis Chiron says it's the first of its type specifically designed for Australian conditions. Others with 125 and 250 cc engine capacities are planned with optional roll-on, roll-off facilities for wheelchair users. Yes, there are. There's some on the, on the stage of production now. They're being fiberglass at the moment to completion. Uh, the, the major hindrance, if you like, to, at this stage is government regulations and rural, particularly the Department of Motor Transport, who are having a bit of trouble identifying whether in fact it's a motorbike or a, or a car and how it's appropriately registered in compliance. What's the future market? future market, as I said, is, is restricted. It's certainly for paraplegics and a lot of paraplegics may not wish to be as adventurous or require this sort of uh, transport uh, as others. Uh, there is a distinct market there though already at this early stage. We have 16 orders in the Hunter region. We've had inquiries from both interstate and some from overseas in relation to, to the future production of the, uh, the Unitrike. So does it have export potential? It does have export potential, certainly. How does this compare with an electric To the north of the picturesque Broke Range lies the site of the new winery. In just seven weeks, a steel skeleton has grown. Prefabricated cement walls will soon flesh out the girders and the latest material evidence of the company's prosperity will be complete. Wyndham Estate's main vineyards and cellars are situated at Brankston. The satellite winery at Pocolbin stretches over 600 hectares. A quarter of the land has already been planted with Semillon and Tramina vines. Chardonnay, Cabernet, Sauvignon, Merlot and Pinot Noir will soon be cultivated. The company is enjoying a period of dynamic growth. By the end of next month, it will have earned a record $6 million in overseas sales. That's nearly 20% of all the wine exported from Australia. Yet less than 10 years ago, overseas sales netted the company only $1,700. International success means Wyndham Estate must expand rapidly now to keep up with anticipated demand. The expansion marks a new era for Wyndham Estate. The new complex should be online in time to process the 88 vintage. And a financial restructuring of the company is expected in the new year. Well, we're going to issue some more shares uh, early next year and uh, that will expand our portfolio. And um, uh, from that we will raise funds uh, that will be then used to finance those various activities. Police say two men were involved in the armed hold-up at the Commonwealth Bank in Station Street just before midday. They say the men pulled up outside the bank in a brown Kingswood Holden sedan. One man waited in the car, while the other went inside, brandishing a sawn-off shotgun. 
Staff and customers in the bank at the time were told to hit the floor. The bandit is described as being between 25 and 30 years old, 178 centimetres tall, of solid build. He was last seen wearing light brown trousers and a blue and white striped shirt. However, his head and face were disguised by a cowboy hat and a plastic mask. The driver of the getaway car is described as 20 years old, 178 to 182 centimetres tall, of medium build with short black hair and sideburns. They escaped with a large amount of money and later dumped the stolen Kingswood sedan in Villa Road behind the Mater Hospital. There was no sign of the gun or disguises in the car. However, scientific police have taken fingerprints. Today's armed hold-up is the fourth in Newcastle in as many days. Yesterday, the Marks Point post office was robbed. On Tuesday, the National Bank of Mayfield was held up. And on Monday, robbers raided the Advance Bank of Mayfield. Crowds of more than 50,000 expected for Surf Fest, the opportunity to promote the business side of the beach couldn't be overlooked. That's where Surf Expo comes in. For the next four days, visitors to the surfing festival will also have a chance to see the commercial attractions of the surfing lifestyle. A free half-hourly shuttle bus will take people from the beach to the showground where they can see fashion parades, exciting surf products, the surfboard factory, skateboard shows and video spectacles. Promoters say Surf Expo is the most professionally presented show of its kind. With interest in Australia's surfing lifestyle higher than ever before, Surf Expo is also being billed as a chance to promote Australia and Australian products to the world. Although this is the English paper, it's the maths involved in the marking that's really interesting, with about 80 teachers from the Hunter District marking 14,000 English papers and double-checking each one, that works out at roughly 300 papers each. But the teachers are only too happy to be doing the job. You see the standards of students right across the state, so that um, in future in the eight, their HSC classes, they know what the standard what standard to expect of their own students and uh, they know, you know what standards to, uh, to expect of themselves. Of course the papers are delivered, marked and repacked according to a strict set of instructions and under 24 hour guard. With papers coming from about 500 different centres, the markers also have to look out for the unlikely event of a teacher winding up marking his or her own students work. With most of the marking now out of the way, it looks like everything's going according to plan, not only here but in dozens of other centres across the state. It's one of the most um, impressive uh, clerical operations that you could ever see. This is the East Lake Youth Centre. It's an attempt by the local community to provide teenagers with a place to meet and plan activities. It's the brainchild of the local youth council, the only democratically elected body of its kind in Australia. They hit on the idea to beat one of the town's biggest problems, a lack of diversions for young people. The main need in the area was that young people from, say, from anywhere from 13 upwards had nowhere in the area to go, like they go to clubs and places, or they just hang around the shopping centres, but there's nowhere actually to meet people of their own age. With the help of a community-based council committee and the use of Lake Macquarie Council's old library building, the young people now have a home away from home, but it's going to be up to them to make it work. That's the main problem. The interest level has to be kept up, otherwise people just drop off and they won't worry about coming again. That's why we've got... Um, trips away planned and just the centre will keep growing as the need grows.